Hi, my name's Andrew Collier. Welcome to International Gas Detectors. Today what we want to tell you about is how to bump test your gas detection system for periodic checking. So this is an example of IGD's professional calibration gas kit. Uh, kit has carry case which will typically house up to three gas bottles. Uh, normal standard kit will be provided with uh, nitrogen as a zero gas and there'll be a mixed gas bottle with carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen um, as a typical mixture of gases. Uh, quite commonly H2S would be provided separately in a separate gas bottle. The kit will provide um, each one of the different types of cal adapters that IGD have for their gas detectors, hose, and the regulator that you're going to use when you uh, introduce gas. Now the regulator itself will show bottle contents, so the pressure of the bottle. Uh, you'll see that when we look at the uh, pump test kit, you, you don't get to see the gas bottle contents because that's uh, an aerosol that's being provided, a much, much low, lower pressure, smaller cylinder. Uh, on this, you'll see that you've got a set point for the flow rate. So once you, once you turn on the gas valve, this will deliver half a litre a minute. That's the required amount for uh, an IGD gas detector. So turn the knob, it's on. You can use this, to, this kit to calibrate or to bump test. The bump test kit is primarily just for that. So there we're applying gas. Uh, we're checking that a detector comes up to approximately the right level, that it trips the alarms and that all the right things happen. Here we're actually performing calibration. So each one of these gases, these gas bottles, will typically contain 112 litres of gas, uh, usually enough for sort of 80-ish calibrations. So this is for people that are doing uh, calibrations on a daily basis, or they've got a large number of detectors that are going to bump test. Um, expiry dates on the gases, depends what they are, how reactive the gas is. Standard kit's usually about three years for, uh, for the fill to be still valid. Uh, some of the more reactive gases can be a lot shorter than that, so typically something like uh, chlorine or NO2. Uh, may only be six months, so you need to check the expiry dates that will be listed on the bottles for that. Um, so if you're doing uh, a lot of calibrations, if you're uh, doing this professionally, if you've got a lot of bump testing to do on a site, then the professional kit would be the one to pick. If you've got a very small number of detectors and you just want to prove this as part of a final commissioning, perhaps you've only got two or three methanes or a couple of CO detectors, um, you want to bump test it, to show that alarms go off, you're going to do that maybe once every month or something. So you're going to do a very small number of uh, actual gas releases onto a detector. Then the bump test kit would be the one to go for. So we'll have a look at that next. Here are the contents of a typical IGD bump test kit. So you'll be supplied with a carry case to keep it all in. There'll be a gas adapter for each one of the different types of detectors that you can use the kit with. There'll be a flow regulator. And we'll explain a little bit about that later. And usually you'll have, uh, as well as the tubing, two gas bottles. One will be pure nitrogen for a zero gas, and one will be a mixture of gases. Uh, so you can use this as a multifunction bottle for different applications. So here we are with a CO detector that we've decided we're going to try and bump test. Um, here's, our, here's our calibration gas bottle from the kit, our pump test gas. So we can see from this, we've got carbon monoxide in this valve bottle at 50 ppm. So we can use this to bump test this 100 ppm range detector. Now the cal kit comes with a flow regulator. So here's our flow regulator. And we're going to screw that onto the top of the bottle. Make sure the valve's closed at this point. We've connected up. We're going to put our tubing on. So there we go. We've got my tubing on. I've got my cal adapter all tubed up. So we're going to put this cap over the front of the detector. So that just pushes on. There we go. And now I'm going to open the regulator and I'm going to adjust the flow here so that the ball is just between those two lines that you can see on the flow valve. There we go, we're flowing at the right level. And now we're going to wait until we hear the alarm go off on the gas detection system. 
As soon as that alarm goes off, I'm going to close this tap off. And we're going to then trap the gas onto the detector and we'll see what happens on the actual control panel. So I can see from the panel here we're coming up, we should be getting over the first alarm point now. And in any second we should be going into alarm. There we go. So I'm just going to close this valve off. Okay, so our panel's in alarm here, so the first thing we're going to do is cancel the sounder. So I'm going to press and hold the function button. And there we go, we've cancelled the sounder. I can't reset an alarm that's active, but I can mute the sounders. So we've muted the sounders there. I can see that I've got uh, the flashing, so I'm on the first level of alarm here. And I can see that channel 2 has gone into alarm. And I'm up at 46, 47 ppm, uh, slowly rising up to its final value there. So we pump tested the detector. I can't reset this while it's still on alarm. I can't do any harm by putting gas on the detector. This is nothing I'm going to do that's going to damage the detector. So we don't need to worry about that. And I'm, I'm watching this to make sure that I'm coming up close to what I expect to be the value that was on the gas bottle. So our gas bottle was 50 ppm. Uh, I'm expecting this to be sort of plus or minus 2 ppm for a good reading off that. So I'm within limits there. Uh, if I left this a little bit longer, we'd probably get a little bit closer with that. don't know when this detector was last calibrated, so this is probably quite a good example of what will happen out in the field. Can't reset that, because I've still got the gas there, I'm still in alarm, so just like a fire alarm panel, if the gas is still present, I can't reset the alarm. So now what I'm going to do is take the gas off the detector, and what we should see what we should see is that gas value start coming down now. Now I could use the other bottle here, the nitrogen bottle, and force that across the detector to push the gas out of the way and get this down a lot faster. Uh, but if I want to save that gas I can just use, let that dissipate and slowly come down. I can, again I can't reset this unless I'm back below the alarm level. So I'm going to watch for this coming, um, I think the first alarm is probably 20 on this, we'll let this come right the way down, 14, so I should be able to reset this alarm now. Press and hold the button. The panel should reset. All alarms have been reset. And we go back to green and normal operation. Now this number will slowly continue coming back down to zero. Again, if I put the nitrogen on, we could force that back down and check the zero point. But that effectively was a bump test of the detector. So we put the gas on. We watched the alarms trigger. Uh, we locked off the gas at that point, trapping it in front of the detector. We observed it on the control panel. Uh, made sure that we came up within sort of plus or minus 3% of whatever the detector range is. Quite happy with that. We've seen all the alarms go off. We've seen the panel go through it cause and effect. Uh, so it's maybe shutting down uh, gas solenoid valves or something like that. Um, taking the gas off. Watch this come back down to zero. And been able to reset the panel. So that's a very typical bump test on a gas detector. We've not performed any calibrations or any zeros. We've purely observed what happened when we put a known calibration gas on. Uh, so we could use this as part of our uh, safe operating procedure for the site. Pick a different detector uh, each week or each month, whatever the time period is going to be that you're going to do, just in the same manner that you do with a call point uh, on a fire alarm system. Trigger it, watch the alarms go off, watch people evacuate and respond to that, uh, take it off, watch it reset and go back to safe operation. Very typical bump test. And you should build that in as part of your uh, monthly or weekly checks for the system that you've got. Gets you used to using uh, the, the gas to bump test it, gets you used to what happens when alarms go off, uh, makes staff realise what they've got to do for their safe operating procedure when that happens, so you can practice evacuations, ventilating the room, clearing it going back and resetting the panel and being able to re-enter an area. Uh, so that's very simply, very quickly, bump test this one on the 625 micro gas detection system. So to recap, we've shown you the difference between the gas bottle kits that we've got available, uh, explained a little bit about the difference between uh, bump testing and calibration, shown you how to do that. Won't matter how you do that on all the different types of panels that we do, the basic operation is the same. So you're going to apply some gas, you're going to let the system go into alarm, you're then going to mute the sounders if possible, take the gas off, watch that reset. 
And you're going to use this so that your people get used to uh, what the gas detection system does when it goes into alarm, what that looks like, how they're going to react to it critically, and how you're going to develop your safe operating procedure to keep your staff safe. So, thanks for watching. Hope that was of use.